James, try this. It's a Montfrache that Jefferson brought back from Paris. I think you'll find the bouquet to your liking. Perhaps I enjoy it more than I should, but this hot weather makes it almost impossible to resist. Well, thank you, sir. I don't mind if I do. Mm. I need to ask you something, James. It's been on my mind for some time now. A few of our colleagues have clamored for gun rights. I've written a brief to present to Congress, but I'm troubled. I feel it poses more questions than it answers. How do you mean? First of all, why should we feel compelled to do this when there is no need? The right to bear arms is implied. It reverts back to English law. We already have these rights for our defense against the king. Lest, of course, we should lose our battle for independence. That George shall never see that day. Weapons are tricky things, James. They can be used both against our foes and former friends should they become future foes. You see, our right to free speech is God-given. But a right to bear arms? <laughs> that flies in the face of the good book, does it not? Thou shalt not kill. About the right to protect one's person and one's property, freedom from the overreach of government. True, true. But it's implicit, don't you see? God forbid if we should ever turn those guns on ourselves. I'm, I'm not sure I follow. Oh, for reasons of murder, uh, personal revenge, civil unrest, our unalienable right to kill for any reason should not be explicit or implied here. Aha, I have an idea. Let the states decide individually. Let's leave this to Jefferson and his lot. <laughs> Let him take the lead and put this into the hands of the others. Should they incorporate gun rights into their state charters, then let them rise up and murder each other afterwards. Let it be on their heads. <laughs> Indeed, put it in their court. Here, listen to this. I have writ, a well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Oh, I like it. Perfectly vague. Yeah, there will be arguments over this, of course. But if it's adopted, uh, perhaps it's for our successes to regulate. Are we a republic, then, with the same laws for everyone? Or are we a group of nation states with different sets of laws? Yeah, well, to be decided, my friend. But not tomorrow, thank God. We shall table this for now. We have a war to fight. And win. Yeah. Silly honey, look, this is going to have to wait a bit. I'm going to be here at least a week. I haven't been home in ages, and I need to see my daughter and my grandkids before they forget who the heck I am and what the hell I look like. Huh. <clears throat> yes. Yes, listen, I, I hear what you're saying. You don't have to worry your pretty little face about it, okay? Tell Mitch I'll confirm every judge he brings to the floor. We won the election, for God's sake, Seely. Just uh, let me be for a few days. I'll be back before you know it. Abe, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you have to take a look at these. Wait, 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 wait. hold on a second. Uh, what, what is it, Bella? You need to look <clears> over <throat> these three petitions that just came in. Oh, jeez, can it wait? I, I, I'm on with Celie. You need to look at these. Well, can, can I look at them later, uh, you know, online or something? I know you. You won't make time. You'll get distracted. God damn it. I am no sooner home than I have to deal with shit again. Oh, God, if it ain't one damn thing, it's another. Uh, look, Celie, I, I gotta go. I got stuff piling up here and my head is spinning. Uh, call me if you need me, all right? Hopefully you won't need me. Please don't need me. Yes, all right, later. I know you're tired, but I don't know if this can wait or not. It looks serious. Okay, okay, but let's get this done quick, goddammit. I've got to get over to Lorraine's or she's gonna kill me. She's expecting me for lunch and I'm dying to see the kids. But look at these. Two of them look pretty standard. One is making sure you'll vote no on raising fuel efficiency standards, and the other one is something about protecting God and the Pledge of Allegiance. What, 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 wait, and this can't wait? But it's this one, the third one. 
Jesus. I counted them. Over 2,000 signatures. Texans for the repeal of the Second Amendment. Oh, boy, are they barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> Big time. You know, these folks are probably pretty new to the area in the last couple of years or so, or at least since your last election. They could be some UT students who are voting age by now. Let me ask you something. <clears throat> what if this is a scam? Do you think it's a scam? Mm, looks pretty official. Certification is there. All the residences check out and the registered voters. Damn. I mean, look at these. I mean, I understand that Austin is liberal, but, but, but since when did they vote? <laughs> since they realized they could. I don't know. Maybe this is a front for Antifa or something. Out to wreck the country. Subversives and gun control freaks who don't understand what the hell freedom is. So, what do you want me to do with these? Well, this is bullshit. Are you kidding me? I mean, it ain't ever gonna happen. The Second Amendment is what keeps this country free. God damn it. No government takeover crap. No low-life perp breaking into our homes without getting his head blown off. I mean, it's a forever deal. God damn. Democrats, they've been trying to undo this thing for centuries. But why? The Second Amendment says we have the right to bear arms. The Democrats say we have the right to arm bears. Oh, that's bad, Abe. <laughs> Even for you. <laughs> well, well, you didn't like that one? Oh, well, 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 look who's here. You look great, Lorraine. And my God, Mark, look at you. You have grown a foot. Hi, Bella. Pretty as ever. We've missed you. Wow. TV, where's the Xbox, Bella? Mark, how about a hug for your grandfather? Sorry, Grandpa. You gonna be president soon? Hey, hey, hey. How about a hug for your old grandpa first, huh? Bella, I took Linda, Joe, and Dallas next door to the Jenkins. Could you run over there and pick them up when it's time? No, no problem. Hey, Mark, I'm making tamales tonight, and I can bring some over later for you guys. Would you like that? Wow! Thanks, Bella. Love the tamales. How about some chips and salsa, too? And holy guacamole! <laughs> Never fails. When it comes to food, it's like a Christmas present. All they want is the box. <laughs> holy Oh, Grandpa, is this new? Hey, Where'd hey, you get hey. this one? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Scary. Well, 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 it is scary, Mark, and, and you need to put it down. What is it? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a gun. It, it's called an AR-15. It's a, it's a semi-automatic weapon that fires a whole lot of bullets all at once. Yeah, I've seen all the video games have them. It's not loaded there any. Is it, Grandpa? It looks really scary. No, no, it's not loaded, and yes, it's really scary. In Call of Duty, it's like the only gun. Kills everybody. Mark, could you go into Bella's office for a little while? I need to spend some time with Grandpa while we have him alone for five minutes. Bella, could you? Sure. Come on, Mark. Grandpa has a bunch of paper to put in the shredder that he doesn't want anybody to see. It's like Call of Duty, only louder. Cool! Ah, <laughs> uh, so... <clears throat> Do you uh, believe some jokers hunt with these things? Uh, I feel sorry for the critters. There's nothing left of them. So how are you, Dad? Long time no see. Maybe you can talk to me now, like I'm your long lost daughter who forgot she has a father. Ouch. Well, that's a nice how do you do. How about a hi, Dad? I realize you've been crazy busy with your work, but I'd really like to hear from you. Oh, how about a, hi, Lorraine. I just wanted to call you and check on you and the kids. I hear that Dan's gone a lot and Mark has ADD and Linda Jo cries constantly and Dallas pees his pants all the time. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Lorraine. Seriously, I, I, I had no idea. You've only been back home once since Will died. You fly home, you lock yourself in your office, and you bury yourself in your work. Big shot Senator Abe Griffin. Too important for your family, I guess. At least when you were governor, you were home with us, and that counted for something. Well, listen, don't hold back, Lorraine. I mean, God, learn how to express yourself. Look. I'm sorry. I, I promised that I would be gracious, but I blew that, I guess. So what do you say we change the subject? What's the state of the nation, Papa? As if any of us really cared. So hey, how about a hug first, huh? 
Mm, maybe an air hug. An air hug? What, what, what's that? You think I have some kind of virus or something? You live in Washington. Oh, God. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, look, darling daughter, here's the deal. <clears throat> Everyone in Washington is in a state of disbelief. I mean, nobody thought he would win. I don't think he even thought he would win. Right now, everyone's scrambling, resurrecting old bills that have all been dead in the water for the last four years, especially this uh, immigration thing. Oh, people are scared. They don't want a Mexican invasion. I mean, you heard he's building that wall, right? Are you good with that? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. I mean, with all the damn drug peddlers and cartels killing each other, it's probably a good idea. Come on, Dad. They're just trying to escape. They're innocent people caught in the crossfire. But it's overwhelming now, don't you see? I mean, the border's out of control, and we've got these stupid sanctuary cities popping up all over the place protecting these jerks. Do you know there's a girl in Frisco who was killed by one just a month ago? I mean, that's wrong. What's going on with you? Uh, are you okay? Uh, yeah, 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 I'm fine. Uh, yeah, just, uh, just a little reflux is all. You want me to get Bella? No, no, I'm okay. Just uh, nothing that a little dying downtime with family couldn't keep. You can cut the shit, Dad. So, now it's your turn, little girl. What's with you and Dan these days? Am I to gather from your texts that all is uh, not well in Camelot? Well, since you asked, let's see, where do I start? His job at Shell Oil is killing him, and it's killing us. When he's home, he stares at Fox News 24-7, and all it does is piss him off. O'Reilly before dinner and Hannity after dinner. The kids are terrorized. He interrogates them at the table about school and then grunts and then leaves, heads back to his office and hides away deep into the night. You men, you're all alike. You don't need women, except for cooking and baby making and child rearing, right? Oh, and maybe a little servicing when your oil needs changing. Well, sounds like good times at the funhouse. Truth be told, we hardly talk anymore, and I can't remember the last time we had sex. Whoa. Geez, sweetheart, I, I, I'm sorry. Next week... He leaves for Riyadh on business, and I don't know for how long. And frankly, I don't care if he ever comes back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. You, you can't possibly mean that. I mean, <laughs> do the kids know anything about this? Or are you getting any counsel? When? He's always gone. Busy, busy, busy. But who knows how much of it is monkey business or the oil business? We're not exactly lovebirds perched on the ladder of trust right now. I got a great idea. Let you and me and the kids uh, take a little day trip over to Six Flags while I'm home. Yeah, make a day of it. Hot dogs, french fries, milkshakes, the whole enchilada. Excuse the pun. Well, I don't know, Dad. They're still a little too young for that. Dallas is only six, and Linda Jo, well, she'd rather play with her Barbies. So maybe Applebee's. Yeah, the five of us for dinner. Then back for pie and ice cream. What do you say? Thanks, Dad. God damn it. This is not oh. good. I'll go and get Bella. Shit. No, no, no. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. It's reflux or ulcers. God, I'm like this Vesuvius lately. More like Washington, I think. Yeah. Wait, I see you looking at me like that. I'll be okay. Stress is a killer, Dad. Stop it. I'm fine. It's, a, it's the country that's upside down. Do you know we had the lowest voter turnout in years? We were a civil war waiting to happen. I mean, it, it never used to be like this. To be honest, I thought Hillary would win. Well, she actually did win by three million votes. Huh. Truly unbelievable. I tell you, nobody likes the government right now. We're in a state of hate. They hate that we're on the take. So what do we do? Huh. We elect a con man to con the cons. It's sick. So if I told you I voted for her, you wouldn't fire me as your daughter? Lorraine, this country isn't ready for a woman president. Not yet. <laughs> Especially a woman who plays hardball like Hillary Clinton. I mean, a black president followed by a woman? I mean, that's, that's just too much too fast. And she had a lot of baggage. Ah, oh, funny how men can rack up baggage. And it doesn't seem to matter. 
bullshit in the men's room counts for truth these days. Whoa. Listen to you. Maybe you should run. Take my place. So when are you going to retire? Oh, can't. Not yet. Gotta make America great again. Build a wall. Tear down health care. Beat socialism and praise God. Do I hear a little cynicism in your voice? You see, Trump is nasty, okay? But he's our kind of nasty. I mean, he's Reagan, only bigger, louder. Huh. He sure got Cruz good. The liar-in-chief calls him Lion Ted, hammers Teddy's father, accuses him of a conspiracy to kill Kennedy, and then calls his wife ugly. I mean, do you believe it? And after all that, Teddy drops to his knees and sucks his you-know-what so he can get elected. Two-faced son of a bitch hypocrite. Ah, welcome to America, the land of the take and home of the fake. And I'm up again in the fall, Jesus. I don't think I've ever heard you talk like this. I mean, you watch Trump, right? Comes out of nowhere. He's a king-size, grade-A New York City TV asshole. I mean, the whole world can see it. He says he can walk down Fifth Avenue in New York, shoot somebody and get elected. That'll tell you where we are in this country. Tell us what. The people are fed up. They don't trust us. The jig is up, Lorraine. We're getting the middle finger from the country and his name is spelled T-R-U-M-P. All right, Dad, calm down. I get it. Now you need to sit down because I got to ask you something. Uh-oh. I know that tone. All right. I'm starting to feel guilty already. Please tell me that you're not going to run again in the fall. Oh, come on, Lorraine. That's not a request. That's an ultimatum. You've been a congressman, governor twice, and now senator. Isn't that enough, finally? Look at you. You're the poster child for Prilosec. You're a mess. Okay, then what? I mean, what should I do with myself? This is all I've ever done. Politics, Lorraine, it's all I know. Go play golf. Exercise, get healthy, take a cruise, see the world. Nope, not without your mother. Dad, I know you miss her. We all miss her. I don't know. I gotta see how all this turns out. If, if you don't retire now, we're gonna lose you like we lost mom. You're gonna follow her straight into the grave. Maybe that's what you want. Oh God, no, Lorraine. Not yet, anyway. Then say goodbye, goddammit. Your grandchildren need you. I need you. Well, let me think about it. Ever since mom died and Will got killed, it's like, it's like you ran away from us. What is it about your family that you're so damn afraid of? That's not true. You bury yourself in your work and you sell your soul to the devil in order to drown your grief, but it doesn't work that way. Campaigning for a bill to keep men out of ladies' rooms isn't going to bring mom back or raise Will from the dead. It's all bullshit, Dad. And it's not going to save your soul. Abe, you have a surprise visitor out here. She says she needs to see you. Says you're her great American hero. What? Who? What? Oh. Oh. She's... She says you got three guesses. And the first two don't count. <laughs> Woo! Let me give you a big old Texas look, sweetheart. <laughs> oh my God. Is this your baby girl? It's Lorraine, right? Look at you. All grown up and so pretty. Do you remember me? Hi, Danielle. Your timing is perfect. I almost convinced daddy that he could put you, Washington, and the NRA in his rear view mirror. Well, <laughs> whatever do you mean? Nothing. Uh, did I come at a bad time? Sure did, like a stray unwanted bullet to the head. <clears throat> I, 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 I'm sorry, that was... Anyway, I'll let you guys talk. Love you, dad. Dinner later, right? Of course. <clears throat> well, I'd uh, normally say it's great to see you, Danielle, but I gotta tell you, right now it's uh, not that great to see you. Now, is that any way to greet an old friend? Come on, you know me. I'm always gonna need you, Abe, in more ways than one. 
Why are you here, Danielle? You gonna take me hostage again? <sighs> we know that you're hands down slam dunk for a second term in November, and we want you to come listen, on board. Listen, 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 listen. Mm -hmm. Before you go any further, know that I'm giving some serious thought to retiring. I'm not sure I want to run again. I, I think I'm tapped out. What are you saying? I'm saying that I can't do this anymore. I, I fought my last battle, I think. My nerves are shot, my stomach won't talk to me anymore, and maybe now is the time to let it all go. Oh, honey, you need a drink. Oh boy, here it comes. For, for 18 years, you have been a champion of the Second Amendment and our right to bear arms. You're a powerful speaker, Abe. A force of nature. Okay, so uh, what's the deal now? We want you to be the keynote speaker at our annual NRA convention in Dallas. Two weeks, American Airlines Center. Trump is king now, and Hillary's gone for good. It's going to be a huge crowd, and we need you to fire them up and buy more guns. Are you serious? Two things. First, we decided to double our usual donation to your super PAC. That's double as in twice the monster donation we give you already. In addition, we're going to make an unprecedented $300,000 contribution to your family trust. What? We know how much Lorraine and the grandkids mean to you now. It's all going to be done on the key team. It's the least we can do. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Why are you doing this? I mean, I'm flattered, but this is what some people might call bribery. I, I'm not into that. <laughs> Come on, Abe. Who are you kidding? You know this game, been doing it all your life. You're good at it. All the favors you did, the Texas Pharma, Shell Oil, your son-in-law's appointment. Yeah, hey, all right, stop it, stop it. You're, you're wearing me out. You're going to have a big challenge in the fall. What do you mean? There's this kid, Jordan O'Hara from Temple. He's a former Marine captain. Yeah, what about him? He's gonna run against you. He got a Purple Heart in Afghanistan. His dad is a wealthy venture capitalist with his fingers in a lot of technology pies around the country. He's a very attractive candidate, except one thing. What? He's announced he wants to do a major gun buyback of automatic and semi-automatic weapons and then abolish them. Jesus Christ. Yeah, well, good luck with that. Won't happen. Not here, not in this state. Yeah, apparently, he got the idea from some Australian buddies he met in the war. Some goon down under went wacko and mowed down 35 people in the Museum of Tasmania. Right after that, the government passed a law banning assault rifles. Anyway, as far as we're concerned, he's a goddamn socialist and a gun control freak, and we can't let him win. Okay, he's not going to win. He's a kid, right? He'll learn that he can't mess with history. The Bill of Rights and the Constitution are hands off. I'm serious, Abe. You have to run. If you don't run, O'Hara will win. He's the first damn Democrat in your district that threatens all of us. Polls show that. Wait, 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 wait. You're polling already? Always. The poll shows he beats everyone except you. He's big time, Abe. He's young, hungry, full of charisma and left-wing bullshit. The kids, the ones who didn't vote last year or couldn't vote, they're waking up. They're coming out for him, campaigning for him. They're idiots. If he wins, he could hurt us for a long time. I got a petition today. What? Texans for the repeal of the Second Amendment. <sighs> really? Maybe things are changing. How can you say that on the heels of this election? Trump was Superman. He pointed out the entire GOP's Weakness? I mean, if things are changing, they're changing for the better. We're getting stronger, not weaker. You know, bef just before you got here, Lorraine brought my grandson to see me. He hasn't seen me in a couple of years, but the first thing he does is go for the TV remote. He thought it was an Xbox. Anyway, he rushes right by me like I wasn't even there. I don't understand. I'm talking about kids. Wizards with gizmos, games, electronics, Wars and battles, fighting in a virtual world. I mean, kids today grow up with more guns than ever. 
Eventually, it'll be live by the gun, die by the gun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jesus, what's wrong with you? Why are you talking like that? Just asking. I mean, we have more crime today than ever. Why? Maybe it's because we have more guns. It's the gamers. Hollywood, they're at the root of all the evil in this country. And we're not defeating evil like we used to. There are more home robberies and people stealing property. It's like Trump said. The Mexican cartel are sending criminals, rapists, and I suppose some of them are good people. Look, I live in Washington, D.C., Danielle. I eat, sleep, and breathe this country's politics every day, 24-7. There's stuff going on right now in the halls of Congress that nobody likes. Bipartisan? What's that? Huh, it's nothing but a relic of ancient republics who made things happen for the good of the people. Of the people, by the people, for the people, remember? It's what we're about. Yeah, well, not happening. Not now. It's still black versus white, and now it's red versus blue, left versus right, and never the twain shall meet. The Constitution is the people, but the people are changing. We're fucked. What are you doing? Why do you do this to me? Yeah, there's something going on with you. Perhaps. But I don't know that I'm your guy anymore, Danielle. I don't know if I'm that fire-breathing, foaming-at-the-mouth patriot anymore. We're selling guns out of fear, and we're selling them to folks who, who think they're toys. They get into the wrong hands, and suddenly these toys turn into weapons. It, it, the NRA is the last bastion of freedom in this country. It's the difference between liberty and slavery, between law and order and chaos. You know this. Listen, I know you're so hurt with all you went through with Elaine and then Will. But I also know you care about the Constitution and the Second Amendment. You need to do this for us. Right before he died in Iraq, one of the last things Will tested, texted me about was about our constant need to conflict all the time. We're always fighting. A serial, endless war, he called it. He said it was because of our obsession with guns. What's that got to do with the Second Amendment? War. The right to bear arms. I mean, it eventually leads to killing, I guess. Whether it's for your freedom or for your TV. Are you done fucking with me? I'm done fucking you, that's for sure. Oh, that hurts. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sorry that that was wrong. Damn right that was wrong. Now listen, Senator. In two weeks, we want you to give a keynote speech about the protections that the NRA can offer the American people. Our platform isn't updated to account for some of these horrid crimes you've alluded to. We now urge local authorities to protect our schools by arming our teachers and teaching them how to use firearms. Gun-free zones will no longer be gun-free without the protection of our volunteer NRA members in case something should happen. Wait, wait, wait. In case something should happen? Are you listening to yourself? Do you have a problem with this? You sound like we need to set up a police academy for every school in America. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I was in school, I never worried about whether I was going to come home from school alive or in a box. Elaine was a teacher, Danielle, who taught kids how to grow up in a peaceful, productive world. She wasn't a Marine in boot camp. Hey, here's an idea. Oh, yes, how about bomb-sniffing dogs on every campus? Yes, kids love dogs. Maybe hand out free taser guns before the Pledge of Allegiance. By God, we'll have peace on Earth. Which reminds me. You do know that we've sold 350 million guns in our country. That's one for every man, woman, child in America. More than that. So, the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, right? Okay, okay, I, I get it. Okay, and here's your surprise zinger. Tell him what he's won, Bob. <laughs> You're going to author Bill to institute better background checks and encourage a psychological profile for every gun buyer in America. You can talk about that with our blessing. Well, thank you, Mother Teresa. F and this too, background checks at gun shows. 
That'll calm the love piece down. <laughs> oh, yeah, and don't forget free ammo with their cake and ice cream. Hmm, funny. So is that it? Will I have a teleprompter? Nope. You're awesome without it. Nobody better. You trust me? You're an Oscar winner. I know you. Okay, okay, just let me think on it for a bit, okay? When do you need to know? Mm, not leaving here until you say yes. We'll pay all your expenses and like we agreed. The NRA will double our donation to your fall campaign. Same goes with our earlier promise. $300,000 to your family trust. For your family, Abe. For God and country. Wow, you, you really know how to leave it all on the floor, don't you? You'll win in the fall, Abe. And when you do, there'll be a lot more where that came from. Whenever you want it. Abe, Celia's been trying to reach you. You must have turned your phone off. Yeah, well, tell her I'll have to call her back, Bella. I got my head in the vice here, and the screws are getting a little <laughs> tight. You're a good man, Abe. You're the best of Texas. The best we've got. I know you won't let us down. So, a week from Tuesday in Dallas? You don't have to run the speech by us. We know you'll be fantastic. I'll knock them on their butts. Count on it. Bye, See you in Dallas. Lord, give me strength. <sighs> Do you realize how long you've been gone, you old rascal? I mean, since Will's memorial service, it's like you, you vanished. Oh, you look like a horse that's been rode hard and put up wet. <laughs> well, I thank you, Pastor Johnson. Such kind words. Uh, straight up or on the rocks? Oh, good Lord, man, it's only 11 a.m. According to the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, having a drink before noon puts you in dangerous territory. But, well, far from me, be it to say no. So uh, it's noon in D.C., right? So pour away, my friend. <laughs> you don't know Washington. If there were AA meetings on Capitol Hill, by God, you'd have about 535 of us attending daily. No, except for Cruz. He's on strict orders to drink Trump's bath water. Anyway, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> What's going on with you? Yeah, well, I uh, guess I'm trying to sweep away my guilt at not having been in church in so long that I can't remember the words to Rock of Ages. <laughs> Hell, do they even sing that anymore? Rock of Ages gave way to rock bands years ago. We're 21st century now. Oh, we've got speakers on stage. We've got laptops, microphones, and super titles now. It's a blockbuster Broadway production starring our Lord and Jesus Christ, our Savior himself. Well, anyway, having you here right now helps bring out all of my shoulda, woulda, couldas in my life. What? in the name of Jim and Tammy Faye Baker are you talking about? Shoulda, woulda, coulda, Roy. I shoulda come home when I suspected that Elaine was sick. I would have come home if we didn't have so damn many committee meetings. Turns out I could have come home if I wasn't so... Whoa, 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 whoa. Wasn't what? Feeling guilty. Making excuses. Being a pussy. Well if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, what a wonderful world this would be. Oh, that's cute. Where'd you dig that one up? Okay, you gotta let God take your hand now. He's always there for you. Well, here's to God and Texas politics, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not sure that God hangs a shingle out in Texas anymore. Why, Roy Johnson? I can't believe you said that. Well, you heard about all these shootings lately? Yeah. So what else is new? It'll stop soon. Comes and goes in cycles. No, no. Three shootings this year alone. All told, 25 people dead right here in Texas. Shopping mall in Houston. Cops in Dallas. A restaurant in Plano where people pulled out rifles and killed nine people in cold blood. On a Sunday after church, no less. Yeah, 
next week it'll be someplace else. I mean, this is America, right? So what do you propose we do about it? But send our thoughts and prayers to the victims' families and we pray that it doesn't happen again. Relax, Roy. It'll stop. It's the media's fault. It's always the damn media. No, 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 no. no. I say it's evil. It's pure evil. And it is spelled G-U-N-S. Well, that's interesting you should say that. Guess who was here in my very office just two days ago? Who? Oh. A certain slinky minx in kitty cat clothing by the name of Danielle Lowe. Wait, now, I... Oh, I, I think I've seen her. Oh, is she that loudmouth NRA bitch you see on TV whenever there's a mass shooting? The only way to be the bad guy with a gun is to have a gun and shoot back. Oh. Yeah. Sad to say. Uh-oh. Are you being a naughty boy again? Oh, come on, Roy. Cut me some slack, will you? Anyway, she comes in here pitching me hard. She's asked me to deliver the keynote address to this year's Texas NRA convention in Dallas. She likes all those guns and ammo speeches I've given over the years, and uh, she's counting on me for an encore, complete with all the hosannas and freedom to God and country. I told her she should get Trump. He'd do it. He loves an audience. Oh, do I detect a little cynicism? Well, truth is, Roy, I'm, I'm tired. I want to retire. I, I think I'm done. I, I get that Texas and the Second Amendment are joined at the hip, and this country is like no other when it comes to protecting our Constitution. But in my line of work, being a minister, I, I just can't comment on that, but especially here. In the great state of Texas, where might is right, except for the kids at UT. Our Constitution is under attack, Roy. The liberals are out in force, and the fight is getting tougher than ever. How long are you going to keep doing this, Abe? I mean, look at you. Ever since Elaine died and Will was killed, ain't nobody. And I repeat, nobody who's dedicated his life more to the service of this state and this country than you have. But right now, you listen to me. You need to take the other fork in the road. You sound like Lorraine. She wants me to be home, and I want to be home too, I think. That's, Dan's gone a lot, and the kids used, the kids need their grandpa now. Funny, I helped them get that job, and now I may pay for that. Those two kids are very unhappy. I, yeah, I'm so sorry to hear that. Now, I haven't seen her in months. Uh, maybe uh, I saw her during Easter with the kids. But what am I going to do? I'm too old to do anything else. Oh, well, I never thought that you would ask. You, my friend, have an open invitation to play golf with us. Seth Patterson, Abner Dingle, well, we need a four. And Palmer and Nicholas and Player, they, well, they won't take my calls. Well, that's not surprising. One's dead and the other two are near dead. <laughs> Besides, I, I play like crap. No, I know you do. That's why I feel like a U.S. Open champ next to you. We'd be happy to take your money at your earliest convenience. Well, maybe you're right. But I think I, I, I have to do this first. My duty for God and country. Here's the deal. She wants me to promote and defend the Second Amendment to the far reaches of the land. It's the church preaching to the choir, right? No, did, did I just hear you say that, huh? Look, sorry. Anyway, I got to do the big, you'll have to take this gun out of my cold, dead hand speech. Praise the Lord. But I ask you, and I seriously want to know, when did the Second Amendment take precedence over the Sixth Commandment? I've been upholding the Constitution for what feels like a century. Free speech and the Bill of Rights, all of them. Well, as a man of God and between you and me, I... I'm not sure that having an arsenal of guns in your house is conducive to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You know, sometimes, sometimes I wish we could define what the founders meant by a 
well-regulated militia. I mean, were vigilantes even around back then? Oops. I better watch what I say here. The, uh, the all-hat and no cattle boys might lynch me for this. No, I swear. Just listening to you right now, I mean, you are at a crossroads, my friend. How are you going to convince 10,000 gun nuts that they're righteous and should all but take the law into their own hands? Now, I'm a minister and a Sunday preacher, and I'm not sure I could do that without being a showman and a hypocrite. Exactly. Sad to say there's something else I have to consider. And uh, we've got to keep this under our 10-gallon hat. All right. What? Before I ride off into the sunset, they're willing to place a quiet $300,000 into my family trust to do this. They also said they would double their donation to my fall campaign. Well, 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 aren't you having a good time? Oh, man, how can you live with yourself? Sorry, Abe, but this just came for you right now. Oh, boy. Dare I guess? Oh, let's see. Your severance check from Congress. No, a big, fat retirement check from the Democratic Party. Citizens United. Social Security. Well, oh boy. Here it is. Perfect timing. Yeah, well, I guess I'm doing this. What? Doing one last reality TV show for the NRA. They've asked me to be their keynote speaker, Bella, in a couple of weeks. American Airlines Center in Dallas. And this here is my paycheck. How much is it for? Well, enough to say adios to Washington for a while, I guess. No, you, you won't leave. I, I know you, you're obsessed. Uh, Ed Bins called again. He really needs to talk to you. Something about an anti-gun protest rally in the UT quad. Seriously? Okay, I'll, I'll call him back later. You said it was later the last time it was later, and now it's later. <laughs> call me if you need me. Roy, did you ever meet my grandson, Mark? Yeah, yeah, he's a cute little guy. How, well, how old is he now? Well, he's nine. Very precocious, warm, sweet, curious about everything. Anyway, he's here the other day, and he happens to pick up my AR-15 laying on the credenza. Uh, on your credenza? What, what was it doing on your credenza? I, I, I know, I know. It was kind of stupid for me to leave it there. But I hadn't had a chance to mount it on my gun rack yet. I mean, keep in mind, there are other guns on the rack, but he notices this shiny black thing that he's probably seen in a thousand video games. I, I didn't have the heart to tell him that it was a gift for having an A rating with the NRA. Oh my God, they sent, you're kidding me, right? They sent you a gun instead of a plaque? I mean, who are these nutbags? I mean, I think about the guns we used to play with when we were kids, do you remember? No, you speak for yourself, Abe. I mean, 22s and stuff, you know, hunting and target practice things, yeah. shooting beer cans off a fence post. <laughs> oh, God! Abe, 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 are you okay? Uh, Bella, Bella, call 911 right away. Call 911. He's been complaining about his stomach. Abe, Abe, Abe. Abe. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's okay. I'm all right. I just got a little, a little lightheaded is all. I'll be okay. Um, Bella, can you, um, can you get my nitro pills in the top drawer there next to my gun? You need to slow down. You're supposed to be on vacation. Stop this. I'm all right. Just, just give me a minute, okay? How about a, how about a bourbon to calm my nerves? You keep this up, and you are not going to have any nerves to calm. Well, none of you are any help. What the hell does a man have to do around here to, to get a drink? Repent. So, what, I guess I'll see you at tomorrow's service, right? Yeah. 10 a.m. Yes. as usual? Yes, yes, yes. Or noon, or 2, or come at 4 if you want. God's there, 24-7.
Thanks, Roy. <laughs> what? The cold grass. I just came from my DAR meeting and ran into Pastor Roy in the parking lot. He said you had a good visit, but you didn't look great, and he was worried about you. He said that Danielle asked you to give a big patriotic speech at the NRA convention. Is that true? Did you see this? Did you see this? What? These kids, all these kids marching. They survived that high school shooting in Florida. Are you watching this? They're talking about guns in the rain. They want to get rid of the guns. 96 people. You should see your face right now. 96 people I mean, look die at, every day. These are high school kids from being slaughtered. Country, mowed down like dogs. No shot down in cold blood in a matter of seconds. And to that, I mean, we Jesus, I mean, no. I mean, the NRA has to see this too, right? We are going to make this the voting issue. Listen, Dad, I've been doing some thinking, and maybe I was a little hard on you the other day. What do you mean? Don't quit if you don't want to. Lord knows you're good at what you do, and every man should pursue his heart's desire. If running for another term makes your boat float, then go for it. Oh, you amaze me. You always do that. You guilt me, and then you vindicate me. Crucify me, and then release me. You've always done what you could to bring our family honor, and you've made sacrifices in our name for the good of the people of this state. It's an honor that the NRA thinks enough of you to ask you to do this again. But look at what's happening now. I mean, this Parkland thing, it, it's just the latest. All of these shooters seem to be wackos using these rapid-fire weapons. And now with a petition to repeal the Second Amendment on top of that? How am I going to do this right now and put my heart and soul to it? In the meantime, my, my conscience is flopping around like a fish on a trampoline. Dad, you can do this. You know the drill by heart. God and country scores a perfect 10 every time. Just put a smile on your face, stick out your chest, knock them on their butts, and ride off into the sunset. A great American hero for the cause. Wow. Are you pitching a job at Fox News or, or getting ready to replace me? Showmanship, Dad. And then when you retire, I'll have Jordan O'Hara thank you when he moves into your old office. <laughs> you, you're just like your mother. Come on, let's eat. And make sure you tell Mitch McConnell that I'll support him on that pipeline vote. I'll do whatever they need. Same with the Obamacare repeal. Look, Celie, look, oh my God, I've completely missed church. Look, I've got to get down to church right, right away. They're waiting for me, okay? I'll, I'll call you back later. Oh my God, oh my God, tell me this is not happening. This is not happening, not again, please, dear God, no. We're live, right? I'm here at First Baptist Church in Round Rock, Texas, where approximately 10 minutes ago, a gunman broke into the church and opened fire on the congregation. Police are here. SWAT teams are surrounding the exits. We're getting first reports that as many as up to 25 people inside the church have been shot, including women and some children. This is an active shooter situation. Repeat, an active shooter situation, and it remains very fluid at this time. Oh my God, no! Dear Grandpa, I'm writing you this letter from heaven. There's no email here, so I hope this gets to you somehow. Since what happened in church last Sunday, I'm finding out that there's a whole bunch of other kids up here who just went through the same thing that I did. I met this one boy. His name is Dylan from some place called Newtown who was killed along with a bunch of other kids he knew. He's only six, just a first grader who likes to draw pictures. And there's this girl named Jamie, who's older and loves to dance. She was killed the same day as all those other kids that were killed in, at that high school in Florida, remember? Grandpa, I always thought that heaven was supposed to be filled with older people, but it's not. I mean, it's nice up here and everything, but it seems there's more and more kids. 
I'm seeing them everywhere. Grandpa, seeing as how you know so much about guns and stuff, and that you're in charge of all the guns, couldn't you keep them away from us kids? Anyway, a lot of us are homesick up here and we want to come home. I miss my friends. I miss you too, Grandpa. I wish you could help. Say hi to everyone. Love, Mark. Abe, I'm right here. Drink some water. Dr. Angelus called to see how you're doing. You can sit up a bit, I can feed you something. Doctor says you can have some broth. I don't... I don't really want to be... There's nothing here for me. You've been through a traumatic event. Doctor wants you to stay quiet. God, I just... I just want to die. Nope. Not gonna happen. You're not dying on my watch. The city's planning funeral services for Saturday at Oakwood. Governor Abbott, Mayor Adler, people are going to want to see you. Well, bury me with him, will ya? Talk to Celie. She told me to tell you that people are sending their thoughts and prayers by the hundreds. I don't need their goddamn thoughts and prayers. I need my family. I want my family back. I'm your family too, Abe. I'm here for you. I'll always be here for you. God hates me, Bella. He hates me. He's punishing me. Listen, Roy Johnson told me that he's setting up a special memorial for Lorraine and Mark when you're back on your feet. Oh my God. Is, 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 is Roy okay? By the grace of God, he is spared. Then tell him not to bother. Tell him to go play golf. He said you'd say that. He'll be over in the morning looking on you. Could you, could you get me a glass of water? Sure. Ice? Hemlock. Stop. Arson. Abe, you've got to try and push forward. You've had a traumatic experience. How's Dan? Is he okay? Are, are, are the little ones with him? Dan is Dan. He's pretty torn up, as you can imagine. Linda, Joe, and Dallas are okay. Christina Rodriguez from Family Services is looking after them. They're in good hands. Could I, could I see him, do you think? I told him I'd call him when you were feeling better. So I'm sure he'd like that. I appreciate that you're feeling better and that you want to see him. I'll get you water. Stay here. Well, 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 look who's here. Aren't you a sight for sore eyes? My hero, the illustrious Senator Abraham Griffin. Last man standing, or sitting, should I say. <laughs> you know, they shot our girl, Elaine. And they shot our little boy, too. I know. But at least they're at peace now. More than I can say about you right now. I love you, Elaine. I love you so much. I was a bad girl, Abe. I know. I pushed you away. I was a coward. Why didn't you tell me? You hid your cancer until it was too late. Barely a word from you, and then you're gone. <laughs> well, let's see. I can think of a million reasons, but mostly it's because you are always busy. You need busy. I need you. I need to go with you. Now. No, darling. No, not yet. You're not ready. Look at me. I'm a mess. Hot soup for you. It's not exactly broth, but I think you'll keep it down. And here's your ice water. <laughs> Look at Bella. You'd be lost without her, Abe. Takes care of all your affairs. Before, during, and after. Abe, can you hear me? Elaine is here, Bella. It's Elaine. She's here. You need to eat something. Doctor says that if you get strong, you can get out of your chair and start walking. 
There's nothing wrong with your legs and soon there won't be anything wrong with the rest of you either. <laughs> you need to do what she says, Abraham Griffin. The tables are turned now and she's the boss. She adores you, Abe. You need her and she needs you. You have a mighty big job ahead of you and she can help you do it. Tell her to do your big speech, even if you can't. <laughs> the NRA would shit their pants. <laughs> oh, so you know about that. What? Here's your chance to do the right thing, Abe. Everyone on the planet needs to hear from you. Walking up on the front of that stage, you'll be adored by thousands. Now's your chance to fire back. You'll kill them. They'll have guns in there, you know. Huh, yeah. I could be the last of a dying breed. <laughs> okay, why don't I come back when you're feeling better? I fell in love with you because you always wanted to take the road less traveled. You became a prosecutor for zero money when Dad wanted you to be a partner and you turned it down. I loved you for that. Then you put Benito Montes away for 20 years. He was a mean, slippery bastard. Everybody tried to nab him. Nobody could do it. But finally, you did. I don't know. Yeah, Bella's father. You put him away. For years, he terrorized her and beat her mother. Guy was an animal. And you saved her, Abe. Then when Bella's mother passed, you hired her, of all things. You're a saint, Senator Griffin. She owes her life to you. Yeah, well, I needed someone here when I went to Washington. She's good. She's very good. How she became a good person with that history is a miracle. You were there for her. You put her father in prison and she thanked you. I'll never forget it, how she hugged you after the verdict came down. You're a hero, Abe. Eh? You're a Superman. And now she's here for you. I wish you were here for me. We're all here for you. If you want us to be, every one of us, me, Will, Lorraine, but you need to get right with God. Forget it. Not possible. It's the guns, Abe, and you know it. Now's your chance to do something about it. You kidding me? God and guns and Texas. Like ham and eggs, apple pie and Chevrolet. More like Butch and Sundance, if you ask me. And look what happened to them. It's us that pull the trigger, Elaine. We fire the gun. We do the killing. Absent the trigger, there is no gun. Without bullets, there's nobody dying in the street or in the schools. Nor being mowed down in the churches from some wacko's heavenly cause. We're at the end of the line, Abe. No excuses anymore. Oh, help me, Lorraine. You, I need your help. I, I, I can't do this by myself. Go tell your story. Tell the story of every one of us. Tell Will's story. He was a hero, and he hated guns. The Constitution protects us, and I can't go against the Constitution, Elaine. Why not? It's just a piece of paper that ancient men wrote for an ancient culture, a culture that doesn't exist anymore. The world has changed, Abe and you need to change with it. But I took an oath, Elaine, an oath to protect the Constitution. It's the law of the land, and it's my duty to uphold the law regardless. Okay, I'm leaving now. Just gonna whoosh out that door the same way I whooshed in. Don't go, don't go, I'm please done. don't go. You're not the same man I used to know. You went to Washington and you might as well have gone to Timbuktu. You're damned right I didn't want you to come home when I passed. You divorced me a long time ago and married the law. Your compassion turned to complacency and your ballsiness to bullshit. Damn it. I desperately wanted to say goodbye to the man I married. Maybe it's too late for us, but maybe it's not too late for you. Now's the time, Abe. Do the right thing. Lee. Messages are coming in from all over. Oh, here's one from Mitch McConnell and a couple others. Ted Cruz and the governor. 
all expressing their condolences and sending their thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Ha! Huh. A band-aid on a war wound. Oh, here's one from Beto O'Rourke. He says, Amy and I have been praying for you every day. Please know that you are loved by all of us and that your strength and courage can lead us in these times of sadness and strife. Love, DNA. Beto. My boy, Beto. Got to remember to thank him with all my heart. At least he gets it. So, how are you feeling right now? You think you could try to walk? Do you know what a hypocrite is, Bella? Well, that's what I am. I've been a hypocrite my whole life. I've seen hypocrites, Abe. A bunch of them. None of them look like you. What do you call a man who's faked everything he's ever done in this life? Trump. <laughs> oh, good one. Good one. And what do you call a man who hunts with the hound and runs with the hare? Hmm. A multitasker? <laughs> <laughs> the road to hell is paved with good intentions, right? And I'm on the expressway to Hades. Stop it. How many times do I have to remind you? You're the man who put away my father and saved my mother and me. For the first time, you made the sun come up in my life. You're a hero, not a hypocrite. So. Quit crying on your pity pot. I can't believe all the crap and, I, and bullshit that I put you through. You've been a blessing. My campaign manager and a secretary's salary. Knocking on doors, putting out flyers 24-7. Yes, we're not done yet. We are going to ride this out, Abe. You're going to get well and make things right. You watch. I've got three tubes in my heart and a zipper on my chest. I'm done, Bella. I'm not going anywhere. Look, drink this. Hot tea and the Xanax. This will help you relax a bit. You need to sleep. I'm here for you, Abe. We're all here for you. Yeah. You awake? Can you hear me? Heard the news. Awful. Some nut in the Air Force, I heard. They're supposed to be on our side. Will? Will, is that you? PTSD, Dad. Seen a lot of it. Too much war, too much death. Strong murder impulses with this stuff. Anyway, I came to see how you do it taking your hand, and I need you to pray with me. If you can feel me in your room right now, then not. Dear Lord, please absolve this man of any sin and release him from the bondage of guilt and pain. I ask this of you, O Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dad, I need to tell you something. Never had a chance to say this before. Love you. You were an inspiration to me. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. You taught me a lot growing up. I remember being so little and you were so big. The dental giant with the great big laugh. You taught me how to ride a bike, throw a football, start my baseball card collection. Mom always gave me chores. And when I didn't do them, you barked at me to keep me honest. Well, it's, it's what dads are supposed to do, right? Love with a little law and order. I remember when I crashed Mr. Hansen's go-kart in the school fence. I begged him to let me drive. I couldn't remember what he said about the brake and the accelerator, so when I headed for the fence doing too many miles per hour, I panicked and used both feet on each pedal at the same time. Wrong move. <laughs> I didn't know. I know, I remember. He sent me the bill for $500. Remember when I crashed my bike into Frank O'Neill's brand new Buick? And when I accidentally overthrew Ziggy Cohen by a mile and the ball went straight through Mr. Cohen's picture window? No deed for a month. 
Didn't help that Mr. Cohen was the principal of your school. You kids were a menace. You were always there for me, Dad. Eggbach, he used to say, stood for everything's gonna be okay. You also said, don't sweat the small stuff, Will. And it's all small stuff. Yeah, well, a lot of good that did. In the end, I, I guess I was wrong about that, too. I lost you to some pretty big stuff when I took you to target practice shooting once. Little did I know that you'd end up on the wrong side of a bullet. It was a grenade, Dad. A fluke accident. Yeah, not small stuff at all. During the assault on Tecrete, the gunfire and chaos were deafening. Dust and smoke burning our eyes. I always felt if we made it to nightfall, it'd be a miracle. For a few wild nights, we knelt in prayer in dark corners, grateful to still be alive. Just like Vietnam. Fifty years later, and it seems that the more things change, the more things stay the same. What do you mean? That we're always in a war. Always fighting somebody, somewhere. A war to win this freedom and to protect that right. Every politician's wet dream. Always some distant and phantom enemy. Constant, endless war. We have God on our side, Dad. Onward, Christian soldiers. Yeah. You died anyway. Get your MBA in business, son. You'll have everything you need. Money, security, power. I think you really wanted that for me, didn't you? But that was never really your calling, was it? Dr. Angelus just called. He wants to see you tomorrow in his office at 10 a.m. It's Will, Bella. It's Will. Will's here. Okay. Say hello to him for me. He tell him he owes me $10 from our last Scrabble game. Want some tea? It's Will Bella. He's right over there. Honey or lemon? Just plain. Will? Bella's a rock. Always has been. She'll make you strong. You need to be strong. I'm the bad guy. I'm the politician. Why couldn't that guy just shoot me? Do you remember the day you changed my life? You spoke about God and how all of the answers to life's question could be found in God. Yeah, well, I must have gone to church that day. You talked about the Ten Commandments and things like do unto others the way you would have them do unto you, remember? Sadomasochism is a two-way street. Earn the other cheek, you said. Don't engage. Forgive. It's funny. Whenever you talked about God and that being right with God was the most important thing in life, I found myself listening. You spoke to me about your faith despite your fear. Changed my life. Oh boy. I remember when I showed you my letter of acceptance to St. Trinian Seminary. <laughs> Could have knocked you over with a feather. Yeah, I was so thrilled. I felt a calling. I think you sensed that. It goes back to when you were a kid. You were like nine or ten, I think. Your mom liked watching The Flying Nun on TV. Yeah, old reruns mostly. But then you'd watch with her, I remember. I thought it was because you had a pre-teen crush on Sally Field. It was either that or you liked funny-looking hats. She was funny, Dad. I loved her. Flying around in the air, trying to get closer to God. Anyway, one night your mom and I were watching The Sound of Music with you. You were spellbound. While other kids are watching Rambo movies, you're watching Julie Andrews spin around a mountaintop in Austria. I don't know. could never get into the gun thing. Rambo, Dirty Harry, Bruce Willis and the Die Hard movies. Too much blood and guts, I guess. I was thinking that maybe you were gay or something. <laughs> it was. Yeah. I guess that explains some things, I suppose. But why did you join the army? 
right out of St. Trinian's with a divinity degree, and you join the army. I, I don't get it. I guess I don't get a lot of things. 9-11, Dad. I wanted to serve my country and serve God. I could do that by becoming an army chaplain. But Iraq. Why Iraq? I, I was so scared for you. Well, I, I had this gnawing pain deep in my heart that this was really a bad idea for you. You hate guns. I never said anything to you because we were in Texas. And in Texas, God and guns are... are, are Dad, calm uh, down. Uh, I, I mean, even after mission accomplished, I, I, I knew that, that this war was not over. We were not over with this. Hell, our military conflicts are never over. Violence and war and our obsession with guns is in our American DNA. And, and we sugarcoat it in, in star-spangled bloodshed and bombs bursting in air. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you okay? I mean, Vietnam all over again. Only desert and dirt instead of jungle and napalm. But I never, I never said anything to you. With God's help, I prayed for all my men to come home heroes. Yeah. And all I wanted was for my men to come home in one piece. Every night, I prayed that it would be another day. Prayed the next RPG would miss us. But it didn't. Did it, Will? I should have known on the day when I got your last text. Dad, this Fallujah thing is thick with the enemy. Heat, smoke, everywhere. I'm praying for their salvation. They are so afraid and I fear that I may not be able to see them through. You kept that? That was the last time I ever heard from you. I prayed for your return, but... Dad, you have to keep it together. You have one more job to do. What do you mean? Your redemption, Dad. You have the power to write laws, the power to change things, make things right. Come on. You are not a hypocrite. And now's your chance to prove it. It's like you talk about kids. What do you say? The thick commandment. But I'm only one man, Will. Christ was only one man too. Do this, Dad. For every man, woman, and child who gave their lives in vain. Thanks. I love you. Oh my God. We are the United States of America, and we stand for freedom, justice, and the American way of life. We are the most powerful nation in the world. Tonight, we have as our keynote speaker a very special and courageous man. We all know what happened that tragic Sunday only a few weeks ago. And our thoughts and prayers go out to all the families of those victims at our Baptist church in Round Rock. Could we have a moment of silence for those who gave their lives in the service of God and country? Ladies and gentlemen, we didn't expect him to be here tonight, yet he is here because he is a miracle of God's love, a believer that in America, it is our inalienable right to bear arms. It is our right to preserve those freedoms that our Bill of Rights has granted us over the last 227 years. Abraham Griffin is an American hero. He's a loyal veteran who fought proudly in Vietnam and has fought for the cause of freedom in every walk of American life. Won't you please give a warm and rousing NRA welcome to the most courageous man in America. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you our two-time former governor of Texas and now senator, Abraham Griffin. As you all know, I lost my family a little while ago, my daughter and my grandson, age nine. 
may they rest in peace. Yet I am here tonight to keep a promise. Almost 14 years ago, you elected me to the first of two terms as your governor. I came with a promise to uphold the laws of the state of Texas and serve our citizens with honor and integrity. Then, almost six years ago, I went to Washington, D.C. to serve as your senator with your blessing. I went with the promise to serve our citizens, to protect the Constitution, and defend the Bill of Rights. As Texans, we've always held to the values of small government, the freedom to live and work at our choosing, and to worship Jesus Christ in all his glory. In Washington, it's my job to enact laws to better American lives and live by the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. The Second Amendment to that Bill of Rights is why we are all here tonight. Our Second Amendment says that we have the right to bear arms. It says we have a right to protect ourselves and our families from harm and criminal intent. And it says we have a right to defend ourselves against an oppressive government who wishes to take away those freedoms. But this is what it doesn't say. It doesn't say that we have the right to shoot and kill our families, our children, and our fellow citizens at the expense of the Sixth Commandment. In our Holy Bible, God states in his Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not kill. Seemingly, our Second Amendment may defy God's law. Our Second Amendment implies that in some circumstances, it may be okay to play God that we get to decide who lives and who dies. Yet we are a Christian nation, are we not? As Christians, we are told to hold sacred the Ten Commandments, which are the foundation of our faith in God. But I ask each of us tonight, as good Christians, do we allow our Second Amendment to take precedence over the Sixth Commandment? In the course of my life in government, we in the NRA have learned to use the word of Christ in order to pass the hat and fill our coffers in the name of guns. Yes, there's money in guns, folks, and don't we know it? Many years ago, this formidable assembly formed a lobby to protect the rights of homeowners and hunters by preserving the right to bear arms. Our NRA was set up to teach people how to be better marksmen and preached gun safety to everyone from 9 to 99. Yet over the years, and especially since 9-11, our country has changed. We have changed. The NRA has changed. We have devolved into a state of fear, and nobody has sold that fear to our American people better than us. Today, in America, Fear sells guns, and where there is fear, there is evil. As a loyal, gun-owning American Christian, I ask that we listen to ourselves closely tonight. Do we have a conscience? Beyond selling guns, do we care about the value of American lives? Who lives and who dies? And at whose hands? We all bark about fighting government oppression as we stomp around with our guns strapped across our chests over our shoulders, around our waists, and in our pockets. Look around this arena tonight and see for yourselves. Since when did this irrational fear of our government fill you with such dread? My God, friends, we are the United States of America, the greatest model of freedom and justice this world has ever seen. Do we really think that we can take on our vaunted military with our AR-15s, AK-47s, and Sig Sauers? Look at the havoc and mayhem we wreak in the name of fear. Look at the evil we have wrought in the name of God. Look closely as our guns have rained down a hail of bullets on our country music fans in Las Vegas, our club goers in Orlando, the students at Virginia Tech, can we see the bloodied faces and the strewn bodies of the sweet and innocent children of Sandy Hook? How about the lunchgoers in San Bernardino or our very own soldiers right here in Fort Hood? And now this, the worst of all tragedies at my first Baptist church of Round Rock that took the lives of my daughter, my grandson, and 24 other innocents. In the name of God, who defends them? Us?
A good man with a gun kills a bad man with a gun, but only after the bad man has killed so many more. And what do we choose to do? Nothing. The great philosopher Edmund Burke once said, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. I ask, are we good men in this body tonight? Or will we do nothing as we have always done nothing? Thoughts and prayers. They are empty tropes as we bury our heads in the sand and the souls of our loved ones in their graves. For the last six years, I have represented our great state of Texas in Congress, and I have done everything asked of me in the name of freedom, our flag, and the Constitution of the United States. But tonight, I stand before you as a proud American and a Christian man of God to declare, thou shalt not kill. So tonight, in the name of God, I renounce my membership in the National Rifle Association. Tonight, I will work to bring in your guns and to repeal and replace the Second Amendment. Tonight, in the name of God and the Sixth Commandment, I am saved. In the name of God, may he have mercy on our souls tonight. Good night, and may God bless America. Oh,